Okay, fam, welcome back. <clears throat> so today we're going to be going over the Grayscale Trust as well as some dividend declarations and also Bitcoin and Tesla. So with that being said, let's get it. All right, so the first thing I want to show you guys here before we get into the other stuff is Bitcoin. Okay, you can see this huge cup and handle pattern. Okay, this is on the monthly time frame, just so you all know. We are not on the weekly right now. Uh, usually we talk about this in a separate video, but I want to show you guys very clearly what's going on here. Okay. Um, as the old saying goes, when in doubt, zoom out, right? So you can see we've been mostly sideways and down for the last one, two, three, four, five, six months until we got to this September candle. And then of course you guys can see we're getting ready to break out of this bull flag or cup and handle. We're now currently in the handle at this point. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the upside is it's pretty massive. Um, <laughs> I will tell you guys right now, the FIB says that we could probably land anywhere between, well, actually, let me uh, do a quick retracement on this just so I'm not misquoting here. So the micro FIBs to the macro FIBs, basically anywhere from 90000 to $220,000. Uh, you can kind of see the numbers, or $240,000, the numbers posted up there. Uh, so pretty wide range, but the point I want to make here is we have seven more days on Bitcoin and then Bitcoin theoretically should have this candle close on the monthly and ideally also on the weekly time frame above the flag. Okay. We're above the handle part of the cup and handle. So that's very bullish. That's definitely what we want to see for the next leg up in the crypto bull run. All right. So. Next thing I want to go over here is Tesla. So Tesla, where are you, Tesla? Okay, this thing has just had a stupid, <laughs> absolutely stupid move. It's a big deal for a, a company that's this big, a trillion dollar company, to have a 22% gain in one day. That is massive, okay? As you guys can see, they have not had good, good earnings in basically five quarters at this point. This earnings, they missed a little on revenue, but massive beat on earnings itself. Uh, clearly, Wall Street was chalking it up as uh, basically, you know, a bullish event. Pretty much, they were they were soaking it up. They like it, so because if they didn't, you know, the stock would not be up this massively. And of course, you have retail and all that. So, uh, very bullish looking chart here. And again, the MACD is turning green on the daily time frame. So you had your earnings and then massive gap up, and of course, a squeeze uh, during this session as well. So it went up even more than it did in after hours. That's always a good sign for you Tesla fans out there. Um, so also MicroStrategy and MSTR, yeah, MSTR and Coinbase are up on the day as well as NVIDIA, even though a lot of the market was actually down. The uh, NASDAQ itself today was mainly flat, didn't really do much. So the, I find that quite interesting that a lot of these, uh, crypto plays are still moving up while stocks are doing essentially nothing, but you guys got to understand, even if stocks are going down, crypto could still go up. I'm not saying stocks are going to go down. I'm just saying that they're not always perfectly correlated. All right. So I'm going to pop up the chart of LTCN here on the weekly time frame. And before I get into that, we're going to go ahead and talk about the declarations for these different ETFs. Okay. So we have the Curve Invest ETFs. The first one that I want to go over here is the TSLP, which is the Tesla version. You can see it's 49 cents per share. Again, the payable date is today. We still have our 70 shares, just so you all know. We, uh, yeah, yesterday was a rough day, but then the markets came back. Um, I pretty much told you guys that I, I believe I told you that I expected that if Tesla, well, basically with the Tesla earnings having come out good and Tesla going up after hours that likely the market was going to move up today as a result of that. And that did happen to some extent. So I'm glad to see that. So you can see there was a big dip, but then of course it came back up anyways. So we still got the TSLP here. It's up 20.3%. So a massive increase. Of course, the other ones as well. Uh, YMAX, YMAG, we have all those. And, um, we also have the AIPI and the, uh, where is it? The FEPI right here. Okay, so there's that one. I'm going to go over the Amazon one next. Again, the only one that we have of the Curve Invest so far is the Tesla one. So 37 cents on Amazon. The Apple version is 29 cents. Um, my guess is uh, a lot of these other ones besides Tesla probably 
have quite a bit of upside. I mean, again, it kind of depends on the performance of the underlying stock. The MAG7 does not usually all move in sync with each other. Uh, so $0.37 cents here for the Google one, Microsoft. This one's actually pretty good, 15% yield. That's a lot more than what Microsoft would actually play, pay you. Of course, if you could afford to buy 100 shares of Microsoft, the actual stock itself, you could always do options on that. So that would probably give you pretty close to about 15%, I would think, um, in addition to whatever dividend they pay. So $0.33 cents per share. And again, these are per month. And last one here is Netflix. You guys know Netflix recently just had earnings, so they of course went up, which is good. That's two out of seven mag seven companies that have gone up and been bullish in their earnings. So that's definitely a plus. So this one's pretty high. This is actually higher than Tesla. So 54 cents on this one. Okay, next one's here. So we got Fepi and AIPI. So this one is Fepi. It's paying a dollar and eight cents. Um, I, I mean, I'm not really surprised. September was uh, a little bit bearish. It was also kind of choppy, not really bullish, but not really bearish, kind of just mostly up and down and sideways. Uh, so the fact that it's paying $1.08 versus $1.20 doesn't really surprise me. Again, Q4 and Q1 usually are the most bullish times of the year. You can see the payouts during that time frame here were larger, much larger than uh, previously. Then we had that kind of April dip the payout dro dropped a little bit, and then, of course, it went back up for the following two months before eventually we got that bearish seasonality in August and September. All right, so moving on to the next one here, AIPI. So AIPI, as of right now, is paying $1.47. This one does not have the drops quite like FEPI does. Um, again, I mean a drop of $0.10 cents per share on a monthly basis um, on something that already pays Roughly about a 25% yield is actually really not even all that big of a deal in my opinion. But of course, if you're all about the yield, maybe this would be the better option. Of course, this is an AI-based uh, ETF. So that would also, if you're more interested in AI than general broad tech exposure, this might be the better option for you. Okay, and we already went over this one. I'm pretty confident we did, but you got your yield max ETF. So YMAG, YMAX, um, YMAX 22 cents, YMAG 5 cents. MSTY and iPop in $4.19. It's huge. Uh, you could have also had the option to do options on this too if your um, share price was right around the strike price. Or I should, let me rephrase that. If the strike price you were doing at the time that you chose to do options was your share price was right around the closest strike price to whatever the market price of that was. I know that sounds confusing. I'll show you guys here in a minute. Okay, so uh, Y Triple Q, 35 cents, AMZ, 76 cents, Apple, 34 cents, AIYY, 72 cents, uh, DSO, 51 cents, SQY, dollar two, and SMCY, 50 or $5.35. Uh, Person, I mean, you could buy SMCY, but me personally, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, there's probably going to be a great deal of nav erosion with a payment that big. But personally, um, SMCI is so cheap that I would personally rather just buy the shares and do options myself. That's just me, though. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what I meant by MSTY. And again, for those of you guys that have this, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, your share price, there's not a whole lot of options on this. So your average share price would have to be right around um, the strike price that you want to do. So basically your share price would have to be pretty much around the market price uh, in order to be able to do options. Of course, that's no guarantee, but you can see they have quite a few different ones. When I was looking at this, they didn't have very many, but now for some reason they do. So you can always do options in addition to collecting the dividends if these strike prices are above your share price. Because again, if you're going to get your shares called away, you would ideally want them to get called away in profit. Okay, so now going over the actual Grayscale Trust, so you can see we're slowly starting to try to push above the support. So I'm gonna just going to go ahead and say that this $13 to $15 area as of right now is going to hold. Uh, and then we have 25 to 27 and then, of course, the 54 all the way up there at the top. So we have one more day to see how the MACD plays out. At this point, it's looking likely that we're going to get a golden cross here. So the maximum measured move here, roughly about 300% gain. And keep in mind, LCCN, uh, the all-time high for that is at 510. 
which is almost a 10x from that swing high. BCHG, this one's starting to push up. It's very bullish looking. I would say probably 630, anywhere between 630 to 770, going to be support there. You got kind of that 10 to 12 area, and then up to about 18 to 20, and then 24 at the swing high. Uh, the reason why I say this white line could still serve as support is because, again, we have one more day left in the trading session to get the close on the week before we can actually say, okay, this candle did this or that. Um, before we can confirm whether it's actually going to pull back or not. Because if it's above the EMAs when it closes, it's likely just going to keep going up. It could pull back, but the uh, probability of that decreases as it gets above the EMAs because the bulls are going to see that. People that want to buy it are going to see it and say, oh, well, it's above the EMAs. The EMAs are getting ready to cross bullish. Why don't I just go ahead and buy now? Uh, that's what a lot of swing traders will do when they decide to swing trade these things. Okay, so 200 to 254%. Uh, HZN, the target for the falling wedge, you can see we broke out of it, is the top of the wedge. So 1050, support currently 340 to 420. Of course, we've gone over the zones before in the uh, levels in between. So 210% gain here. ETCG, we're still kind of sitting in this descending triangle. Again, it's a... So, some people will line up the, the lines with the wicks. Some people will do it with the bodies. It's just most people, you, they usually have a system for doing this. We try to be a little flexible because sometimes sometimes you'll get one pattern and then another pattern will form. And you'll be like, okay, so which one is likely going to play out, right? If they're both, if you get two patterns that play out, like say um, a falling wedge or something like this, right? And... Well, it's hard to explain. If you get something like a falling wedge and a falling channel, um, which are both bullish patterns, and it doesn't really matter, they both break out, right? And the inverse is true. So that's kind of what I mean here when I say that. All right, so ETCG, anywhere from 7 to 10, in my opinion, is going to be uh, a good buying area because, again, the EMAs are kind of sitting right above that, the top of that support zone. So 1780 to 20 is the next kind of swing high area. Measured move here would be about 170%. ETH E, um, I'm looking at about 1850 still on this one. You could buy as high as 2330, of course, until it gets above the EMAs. The EMAs are going to serve as some kind of uh, bearish control. That's usually how it works with the EMAs. Um, and of course, we also have to fill that gap at some point. And in order to break structure here, we would have to actually get above the $36 area to can be confirmed in a new bull trend. So uh, targets up here, 2370 to 20, roughly about 2860. And then that cup and handle target just shy of 48 bucks. Measured move here, 155%. GBAT still kind of vacillating around that support. So, um, I mean, I can't tell you guys what to do, but you know, it's been sitting here for a while. If you choose not to take advantage of it, that's on you. So 450 to 510 at support, 780 to about 10 bucks at resistance, and 32 at the swing high, or I should say the all-time high, because that is actually the all-time high. As of right now, 570% gain. Phil G, Phil G, this one has had a small little pullback. Uh, it's a bit weird to see this turn red after it's about to turn green, but we'll have to see how this plays out over the next day. So support still here between 36 to 41. And of course you got your all time high at 40 or 400. So the measured move here could be as much as about 1,060%. GLIV, same thing. This is a, a little unusual, but again, you know, until bit, until Bitcoin starts smashing past its all time highs, it's possible that the alts might still continue to bleed just a little bit. Um, again, when Bitcoin is still in the spotlights, alts usually do go up in value, but they usually don't outperform Bitcoin. Again, we don't get that until the Bitcoin dominance falls off a cliff. And as of right now, we're not seeing that Bitcoin dominance is still moving up. So 1230 to about 1490 at support here, the all time high is at 80. So the measure move just to get back to all time highs, 548%. G-Link support here, 
40 to about 46. The all-time high is going to be at about 220. Again, we're kind of seeing this red candle here. I'm not sure what's really going on. Uh, it's a bit strange, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So 466% move. GSAW, uh, once again, the support is still going to be roughly around 3, 3 to 350 and then 580 at the all-time highs. So maximum move here, if you did manage to get it down here, is 95% just to get back to all-time highs. GXLM, uh, the buy range somewhere between 15 to about 24 bucks, and then the swing high up here is at 70. That is not the all-time high. That's just the current swing high. 354% move. Mana. So the current buy area is going to be roughly about this white line. So 10 bucks. And then the all-time high is at 70. This would be about 580% move. Zcash still kind of chopping sideways. Um, again, until we see some fat green candles go to the upside, which likely is not going to happen until alt season or Bitcoin breaks all-time highs or both. Um, it's probably just going to keep going sideways. So Roughly about three to six bucks somewhere in there is kind of that buy area. And then the swing high, of course, is at roughly about 10, 10 and a quarter per share. So that move would be about 235%. All right. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.